Ever since I was younger, I had a fascination with mysteries. The obscure, the unsolved, and the unknowable. From interesting to disturbing, harmless to dangerous, join me as I uncover rabbit holes and track down information on a plethora of topics you may know little about. This is Atlas Investigates. Hello everyone, I'm Atlas, and this is part three of the Chris Chan Iceberg. Welcome back. Once again, just to get the explanation out of the way, an iceberg chart is a collection of information on a specific topic ranked based on how obscure and or disturbing the facts are. And Chris Chan is a person on the internet that many people are familiar with, or have at least heard of. He holds the title of the most documented person on the internet because of the sheer amount of facts that are available regarding his exceedingly strange life. This iceberg was created by the user Piccadilly on icebergcharts.com and was posted on the 8th of February, 2022. This is part three of this chronologically organized iceberg, and I encourage you to go to my channel and watch the first two parts if you haven't already. If you've already done that, then let's begin. Early Adult, 2000 to 2007. The Megan Saga. To preface this section, it should be known that Megan Schroeder is the first girl that we see Chris pursue romantically, at least that we have concrete evidence of. We know he was interested in girls before, but we can see the whole episode play out in this instance, Chris and Megan met at the Game Place, a hobby store where Chris spent a lot of his time in late high school and early college. And we've actually already covered that here on the iceberg, I believe that was in part two. Megan wanted to be friends, while Chris desperately wanted more. It is around this point in the timeline that Chris really committed to trying to make Megan his girlfriend. Megan and Chris email chats. This is a record of many of the emails sent between Megan and Chris over the course of their friendship from 2005 to 2008. It's where much of the information regarding what transpired between them comes from. And from these correspondences, we can see that their friendship seemed to start out as cordial and genuine, but eventually devolved. Chris made repeated advances toward Megan that made her uncomfortable, including the way that he talked about her, the fact that he would touch her and be protective of her around other guys, and her increasing annoyance with his inappropriate behavior, Brony. Chris was introduced to the My Little Pony franchise, as well as Sailor Moon, through Megan and became interested in the show. This was prior to the airing of the 2010 show called Friendship is Magic, so we're talking about the 80s and early 2000s cartoons in this instance. He'd start collecting toys and, much like with Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, would make custom figures. A trendsetter in many ways, the fact that he did this in 2005 means he predates the brony subculture that would develop later by about half a decade. eBay Loot this is a bit of an odd placement, as the article that this point is based on contains information about Chris's eBay activities throughout the years. However, because of its placement here during the Megan saga, I assume it's referring to the fact that Megan often got Chris to buy stuff for her on eBay because she didn't have a credit card. According to the quickie, this included pictures of World War II era German soldiers, Sailor Moon merchandise, anime CDs, and more she would repay Chris with, and I quote, cash and or unneeded goodies, whatever that means. Sonichu Issue 3. This doesn't really have anything to do with Megan, but he finished Sonichu Issue 3 during his quest to woo her, so I'm still gonna include it. This issue, released on February 21st of 2006, focused on introducing the Chaotic Combo, a group of five characters that would go on to be the main supporting cast for the rest of the series. The group consists of Wild Sonichu, Bubbles Rose Chu, Angelica Rose Chu, Punchy Sonichu, and Magichan Sonichu. 
They were all raised in different environments and therefore have many different powers that make them different from Sonichu and Rosechu. The issue ends with the chaotic combo teaming up with Sonichu to fight Black Sonichu. College graduation. Chris finally graduated from PVCC in May of 2006, receiving a computer-aided drafting and design associate's degree. As mentioned earlier, it took him five years to get this two-year degree. Instead of wearing the school's cap and gown, Chris chose to wear the robes from his high school graduation. And of course, he also had his Sonichu medallion on. Sonichu issue five. Once again, Chris returns to writing about his real life in his comic. In this issue, Chris attends Sarah Hammer's wedding in spirit. He also includes a character named Sailor Megtoon, who is obviously meant to represent Megan Schroeder, and Megaji La Skunk, who was based on a Sonic OC Megan had created. Chris monologues about his feelings for Megan, which reads as follows. It's too bad I can't stay to catch the bouquet, but at least I can watch my old friend leave for a happier life. As long as my barrier attack lasts, I can remain visible only in spirit. I'm also happy because I have found a real super girl who allows my heart to feel stronger with love. A sweet sailor soldier who I have first met after having started playing the heart of the cards like destiny in a pyramid of light. But not just destiny, but a strong, pure love sweeter than a passionate strawberry or the sweetest piece of chocolate. <sighs> Sarah almost lost her straightforward shot to long happiness. I hope that I will get to walk down that aisle someday myself with no trouble. Asymmetrical feelings. I love Megan yet she's not ready to return or seek it. I'd feel better if I could chat with her on the phone, although she's uncomfortable doing that. Our email communications are okay, but speech speaks louder than typed words. Later, Chris's make-believe sister Crystal gets trapped in a mirror dimension during an attack by Mary Lee Walsh and her jerk-offs. Death of Patty the Dog. On June 27, 2006, Patty Chandler was put to sleep at the old age of 18. Chris was deeply affected by this, and he was the one who signed the paper that authorized her euthanasia. The Chandlers held a little funeral for the dog, and Chris wrote a eulogy that he presumably read at the service. Here it is. My family, furry friends, anyone else present. We are gathered here today to pay our last respects and wishes to our dearly beloved Beagle Spitz Patty, who has departed from our world here on Earth to a doggy heaven where she will be happier because she will run free and play with all the other dogs who are already having fun up there. And she will often look down upon her beloved family, me, Christian Chandler, my mother, Barbara Chandler, and my father, Robert Chandler, and the cats who have grown fond of Patty. I will always remember Patty for all the lovely memories she has shared with me from when I picked her out of the litter at my Aunt Karina's house in Red Oak, Virginia, the many walks I have shared with her around this neighborhood, as well as the neighborhood in the Newberry Town subdivision in Richmond, Virginia, the time I watched my old best friend Sarah Hammer take Patty by her front paws and danced a bit, the times I've watched her stand on her hind legs and then rewarded her with a biscuit bone. The time I took my camera to her pen and took this lovely picture of her and me, and I made a big deal how she'll be like a movie dog star. The times I've just sat with her in the yard and petted her head, I've always given her a bally scratch, where I stroke her head with all five fingers like as if I was gently squeezing a rubber ball. The many times I've fed her a can of food and a cup full of dry food and refilled her bucket with fresh water so she can drink and wash her face. There was also the one time I saw her resting on top of her doghouse, not on her back like Snoopy. I've often wondered why between both her ears why one was bent and the other was straight like an arrowhead. 
When Patty was brought to the vet on that faithful day, I was distraught with fright and concern for her health. I stayed with her during her final moments with a hand on her head and a tear in my eye. When my mother was brought the paper that gave the doctor permission to send her on her way, I didn't want her to be the one to sign it. I raised Patty since she was a six-week-old pup, and I wanted to take the strain for signing the one-way ticket. It was hard for me, but it was for the best. So I signed that paper with a crying sonichu face, saying, We love you, Patty. After that, I gave her my final pets, hug, hand to paw hold, eye contact, ear rub, cheek to fur rub, and I sadly waved her for the final time, and I said, Goodbye, Patty. I love you. As I stood outside, I heard Patty's last bark saying, I will always love you, Chris. Thank you. But we all must move on with our lives, with our beloved lucky mutt in our hearts and in our memories. So, Patty, may your old doghouse and surrounding flowers forever memorialize your blessed heart, your barks at the stars and strangers, and your loyal love that you have blessed upon me and my family and friends. Bark on and rest in peace, our beloved lucky Patty. This is actually a somewhat heartfelt goodbye, and it's one of the few times I genuinely feel bad for him. Patty would be buried in the Chandler's backyard, and her doghouse would become a grave of sorts. Pixelated PS3. This is a weird PS3 that Chris made to use as a prop in a video for the robot chicken What Would You Do For A PS3 contest in 2006. This was a contest in which participants were supposed to create a video proclaiming what they would do in order to win a PlayStation 3. Among other things, Chris states that he would make his own PS3, and actually did, then proceeds to reveal the pixelated PS3, which is actually just his PlayStation 2 that he encased in a bunch of Lego pieces. Apparently, he kept the device like that even after the video was over, and proceeded to leave it like that, even while in use. It's quite surprising that it never overheated and destroyed itself. Here's the entry he filmed for the contest. Hello, my name is Christian Weston Chandler, from Rockersville, Virginia. What would you do for a PS3? What I would do for a PS3? i tell you what I'd do. Well, if I had the money, I'd wait in line, like all the other people did with their tents and all that good stuff. I throw away the cure for autism if I had it, because I want to get rid of that dog, doggone long, lifelong curse that I've had. And, uh, oh yeah, I would trade in my PS2 for another thing. Or, uh, otherwise, um, I'd make one from wood if it was hard enough. But you know what I did? I did it. I made it. I made one from Legos and Pizza Blocks. And believe it or not, I have to play guitar here on this thing. Thunder Horse! Sonichu Issue 6 The beginning of this issue serves as a memorial of sorts to Patty. However, instead of dying, the Patty in this comic turns into a sentient, anthropomorphic version of herself. She and Chris talk for a bit before Chris uses his Nintendo DS to open a portal to Quickville, which Patty jumps into transferring her into the world of the comics. After this, Chris and the Sonichus come up with a plan to save Crystal, collecting the seven Sonichu balls. The villain, known as Reldnak Natsu Natsurk, appears in his Sonichu form and confronts Chris. As hinted by his name being the reverse of Chris's name, he is the opposite of him in every way. This means that he is evil and gay. At this point, Black Sonichu switches sides and joins Sonichu in the chaotic combo. Chris's old OC, Bionic the Hedgehog, makes an appearance, saving Christian from Nate Zerk. Megan also shows up. Yep, I'm on TV. This is a compilation DVD that Chris made and released himself on his 25th birthday. It includes all his TV appearances up to this point, the videos he made himself, such as his Animal Crossing and Game Boy videos, 
and many pictures Chris had taken of himself, his family, and his art. This DVD would not originally be released to the public, but trolls would later get their hands on it by pretending to be one of his old high school gal pals who was interested in viewing the video. There was also one more video on the compilation, which is Christian Chandler's Future Message. This is the last video Chris put on his Yep, I'm on TV DVD, which he filmed on February 24th, 2007, his birthday. In it, he talks about his life and views on the world, and also puts forth the idea of a dating education class, which would be taught in high schools, so that kids can learn how to properly interact with one another, and figure out how to go on dates in order to avoid awkwardness or getting left out. He wishes for this video to be shown in schools. Here is the video itself. Hello ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, and dudes of all teenagers as well as the uh, gals. My name is Christian Chandler. I am here, and y'all are there. <laughs> this message is for everyone of the present and the future beyond this date. February 24th, 2007. My birthday. My 25th birthday. I am high-functioning autistic, and in my 25 years, I have seen and learned so much. And today, I shared, intended to share some wise words that I hope each and every one of you will take to heart and allow for yourself and everyone else a better prior future. First off, remember that going to school is not a torture, it is a place of learning, a place for growing, a place where you form the spilling of your own opinions, your own feelings, and your own personality. So learn everything you are able to and grow with it. Now, you should also be able to try something for yourself before forming praise or detest of it. As long as those things will not harm you or shorten your lifetime in any way, it's totally cool. What is totally not cool though, is thinking or doing these things which are very harmful to you and definitely gro will gross out those around you that don't do it because I haven't done it and I don't like it doing either of them. You should avoid at all costs smoking, drinking alcohol, and intaking similar icky, dangerous stuff and smoking will eventually cause cancer and it will you'll be more likely to get heart attack viruses and your life will be cut drastically short they don't call cigarettes and cigars death sticks from nothing other than killing you slowly if i could i would take every last ounce of tobacco put them on a rocket and shoot them up to the moon and for uh... alcohol They'll cause uh, liver dysfunction, kidney prop kidney failures, and uh, not only that, but when you get drunk enough, bar fights and automobile accidents. So it's a real slow-acting poison. And I haven't done either one, and look at me now, I'm a fizz and fiddle, and I'm living 25, hoping to live on to be about 80 to 100. And y'all, hopefully y'all will get a chance to get up to that ripe old age as well. Now, among the better things you should definitely try before despising is some of the hobbies of those of your own opposite gender. Like, uh, for example, if you're a young gentleman, I recommend buying yourself a My Little Pony figure of your favorite color or whatever. Now, uh, stroking the hair of said pony is very relaxing and therapeutic and also rubbing it against your cheek. That's nice. And also, uh, you can pretend that uh, the pony is uh, that girl you want to take you want to take out to, you want to take out sometime, and talk to the pony like you would talk to the girl. Now, for the uh, ladies, I recommend a good old Autobot from Transformers because you can get to learn how to examine the mechanics and variations of each and every I mean of the uh, autobot you have like uh, you would try like you would learn how a man works and it'll allow you to feel more comfortable in approaching and talking to that boy you've been flirting from a distance or uh, just been uh, flirting with from a distance and uh, hopefully uh, all, you, all you have to do is just end up and say hello I mean it's not so hard all you have to do is say hello to the man ladies, that's all. 
and everything will just keep rolling from there. And also uh, with the uh, Autobots, once well, a vehicle, well, you can you can drive down that imaginary fast lane. But in any, in any case, uh, while few people may ridicule you, you should not worry about it. If you, if because most everybody will be all, totally okay with it, because they, it won't matter. It won't matter because. They see you enjoying it, and that's totally cool if you're enjoying it. So you enjoy it, just do it. Don't worry about other people's op opinions. Because uh, compared to the other school, those people who disregard you are just total peanuts. And I'm not talking Charlie Brown, I'm talking about the little nuts yeah, with the shells. The real peanut gallery. <laughs> that would be peanuts, wouldn't it? Also keep in mind that while you're playing with these things, you should keep in mind of what your true original gender is. Because uh, it's like you're learning about that girl you want to take on a date, young man. Or uh, likewise, you feel more comfortable to approach that boy uh, just saying hello that you've been checking out from a distance, young lady. And hopefully in due time or now, each and every one of you will stay straight. You know, girl for boy, boy for girl. Everything else is vice as said by Dr. Kinsey. Not just for me, not for the big man upstairs, not for your family, but do it for uh, yourself and for, and for the benefits of everyone in the future. Your children, your children's children. And besides, if you stray away from the straight path, it can really jeopardize the entire future of the world and the human race. Also, girls and ladies, don't just go over Gaga over to handsome rich boys and men because they may turn out to be disrespectful and distasteful in their personality. You should take into consideration all the other gentlemen that uh, you may have considered that may be less attractive or equally, less or moderately, because those will because they will likely have a better personality that you will t that you will generally enjoy and like and they may end up having a brighter future for themselves. Like, look at me now. I'm shooting this movie for a DVD. That's got, that I hope will be shown in a uh, couple of schools, at least. Now, uh, also, uh... Also, when, you each, when each and every one of you has a true general understanding of the uh, opposite gender, and after finding that special man, ladies, or that special girl, gentlemen. Always keep to heart and memory the times that you two felt most attracted to each other because that will be a key point to the recovery from any disputes or arguments that you two might have in the future. Otherwise, uh, you two would just be darn happy with each other. But it's not all always going to be peaches and cream or strawberry shortcakes. And also remember, you two should keep each other. Because there will be nobody else, no matter how much you think about it, nobody else that can replace that special someone, him for her or her for him. There's just nobody else. There's no substitute for that first one. And now, I leave you with the lessons that you should have, I hope you have learned from my message. You should, all, you should stay in school. Learn as you much, and try before you praise or despise. Never smoke, never drink, never worry about how others think of you when you do things, or when you play with things that may not that may not seem like you or whatever. Don't be afraid to approach those of your opposite gender, and most importantly, please stay straight. I leave you with those words as I have shared with you on this, my 25th birthday, February 24th, 2007. I am Christopher Christian Weston Chandler. Live long and shine on in your very own unique way. War is never the answer. Peace is. Never fight. Compliments will get you fuzzy wuzzies. War gets you prickly wicklies, as well as punches that get you those too. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. 
contact with Cole. Wanting to send his Yep, I'm on TV DVD to his half-brother Cole Smithy, Chris reached out to him via email and asked for his address. They exchanged a few emails, during which Cole expressed his distaste with Barbara for the abusive way in which he was raised, saying, quote, I grew up in an abusive household with Barbara and my former stepfather, Jerry, where physical and mental punishments ran the gambit from bare-assed beatings to cold showers to bizarre scenarios acted out with glee by two deeply neurotic adults. The treatment I received in Richmond, Virginia, was another matter altogether. To raise a child in such conditions is inexcusable. Even at a very young age, I knew that they would abandon me. They were both irresponsible and incompetent parents who exposed me to traumas that I would rather not remember. End quote. He also badmouthed Bob, saying, quote, The crux of my problem with Barbara comes from two sources. The first is Bob's bitter influence on her, which worked to separate our relationship just as Bob did with his own children with whom he has no association. In nearly 44 years of life, I have never met a meaner or more reprehensible Republican cur than Bob Chandler. I hope that you will email me when he dies so that I can celebrate. Our mutual hatred has never been a secret, and it points out Barbara's proclivity to isolate herself via scurrilous mates. End quote. One thing of note here is that the reason for Cole's dislike of Bob is unknown. Cole believes this hatred to be mutual, but there is no evidence of Bob disliking Cole. I've also seen some people say that Bob was the person who helped Barbara abuse Cole as a child, but this is a misconception. The person who actually did was Jerry Harmon, a man who Barbara was with at the time. The Adam Stackhouse Saga, Sub Saga. This is a very small saga that takes place during the Megan saga, so I didn't want to cover it after we'd finished the Megan saga because it's very integral to how Chris's and Megan's friendship ended, um, sort of. So I'm going to like call it a sub saga and sort of put it in here as a little break from the Megan saga, even though it relates to things that are happening during it. I'll, you'll you'll see in a second. We'll get there. Chop chop, Master Onions rap showdown. This is a long one. It requires a little bit of explanation. In 2007, Chris took part in the Chop Chop Master Onions Rap Showdown, a contest in which participants were meant to film themselves performing one of three songs based on the game Parappa the Rapper. Chop Chop Master Onions Rap, Instructor Mussolini's Rap, or Cheap Cheap the Cooking Chicken's Rap. The tracks had to be performed a cappella, meaning with voice alone, no instruments, and the winner would receive two PlayStation Portables and an all-expenses-paid trip to Seattle, Washington for that year's Penny Arcade Expo. In typical Chris fashion, he broke the rules by ad-libbing lyrics that related to his personal life, which disqualified him after making it into the top ten, which he got into probably because there were very few entries and not because he was good enough to make it into the top 10 if there were more. At this point, he tried asking everyone from his half-brother to his church congregation to vote for his video, even going so far as to create fake accounts in order to boost the number of votes. The reason he wanted to win so badly was because he planned to give one of the PSPs to Megan and have her come on the trip with him, so that she would finally fall in love with him, and they would have sex. Hey, P Station. My name is Christian Chandler. I live in Bucksville, Virginia. I have a PSP. I like the rap. I play with the rapper. I go with you now. The only song I know is Master Onion, which I got from a demo I bought from my friend Megan. I have the PSP and she don't. So give me the PSP. I rap the rapper so I can give one to her, and then we can play it together. So here we go, we're gonna sing it now. Master Onion a la mode. Kick, punch, it's all in the mind. If you wanna let test me, I'm sure you'll find that you all think that I teach you sure to beat ya. Over that rest of that you tell us the teacher now. Kick, kick, punch, punch, chop, chop, block, block, what's more kick? Kick, punch, punch. Chop, chop, and block, 
block. So get lucky. It's going to get lucky. We got the air free. We got to move down to the sea jockey now. Duck. Duck. Yup. Yup. Turn. Turn. And pose. Pose. Now listen carefully. Jump. Jump. Pose. Pose. Duck. Duck. And turn. Turn. Mmm, yeah. I see you get better. Kick it to the limit in order to get to turn now. Kick. Punch. Kick. Punch. Chop. Block. Chop. Block. Chop. Kick. Chop. Kick. Punch. Block. Punch. Block. I'm gonna get harder now. Duck and jump. Duck and jump. Turn and pose. Turn and pose. Duck and turn, duck and turn. We're gonna jump and pose, jump pose. Come on now, why don't you follow my word? Cause now it's almost done, it'll make things worse. I wanna see if you want what it means. To be on top of the master plan, are you mad now? Who are we going now? Kick punch block. Kick punch block. Chop kick block. Chop kick block. Block turn kick it. Block turn kick it. Block the punch, block the punch. Duck, duck, turn. Duck, duck, turn. Jump, kick, duck. Jump, kick, chop. And punch, punch, punch. Punch, punch, punch. That's it for today. Good job, Rapper. You can go to the next stage now. Yahoo, all right, Rapper. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations, all right, thank you, teacher. Again, what? Man, you are so good. I got a dead loose memory money for students like you. you want to try a super beginner's course? You're, you're picking on me too fast. I'm out of here. It's our hero on PlayStation 3. Don't press the PS button after selecting, see? Make sure you hook it up with the converter controller. Do a rock gun, yo. Na 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 na. Rap, rap, rap. That's a rap. This did not happen because Megan was reaching her breaking point with Chris at this time, and his video was disqualified and he lost. Instead, first place was taken by a guy named Adam Stackhouse. Chris sent this email to Sony after finding out that he lost the contest. In addition to my message on your machine, I really wanted that trip so I could have a chance to impress my sweetest Megan and possibly fulfill my dream of getting married and soon have a daughter named Crystal. Yet now I, a frustrated, high-functionally autistic 25-year-old virgin, have been balls broken like I have through a big chunk of my life in America's favorite game, Kick the Autistic. Sigh. I had my fantasies of having fun with Megan, taking her to a really extravagant destination, I am not rich, taking a long wanted tour of the Nintendo of America company tour with her, playing Guitar Hero against the guy in the Parappa costume, jamming with Megan in the hotel room, and possibly our first time in bed. Sigh. Life can be so unfair and fucking corrupt, but I digress. Take the acapella rule to the max on those three out of ten videos. Take care, Christian Weston Chandler. CWC is angry. This is a video Chris filmed after losing the Parappa the Rapper contest and not being given first place after contacting Sony and raging about it on the forums. In this video, Chris rants about losing and curses the winners, Adam Stackhouse, A. Prelewski, Brudel, and Surya Bushwald. He targets Adam Stackhouse specifically, printing out a picture of him and shooting it with a Megatron dart pistol. A very mature display of sportsmanship, if I've ever seen one.
How angry I am at Adam Stackhouse, Apraluski, Rudell, and Surya Butchwald. They should have been disqualified because they had music and more than one person in their Freakazoid videos. Back to the Megan Saga. 4chan. In October, two guys named Daniel Mims and his friend Lucas, who went to the game place with Christian, took photos of him there and uploaded them to the website 4chan in order to make fun of him. Later, discussion of Chris would spread to the something awful form. These would be the posts that would cause Chris's notoriety to really grow online, and after this, attempts to mess with him would really start. Fan art. On November 3rd, someone in the 4chan thread about Chris named Evan Christopher George sent Chris an email showing him some of the art that the 4 channers had been making about Chris and Sonichu. As you might guess, much of it was of a pornographic nature. Here is Chris's response. Thank you for your fan art contributions. In constructive criticism, I like the one with the girlfriend auditions, as well as my glaring in the eyes of the blue guy. But I am feeling great detest towards the other two. Sonichu and I are not of that nature at all. If you would like to make it up to me, though, please draw a strip of Rose Chew stripping for Sonichu and have him fuck her, and draw Rose Chew masturbating and squirting. I am straight, damn it. I will not be veered in any other disgustingly grotesque direction. Again, most nasty fan arts are not appreciated at all. Please feel free to share that quote with the rest of the fans. Sincerely. Christian Weston Chandler. We're keeping track. Obviously, this only encouraged the 4chaners to create more and more fan art to make Chris uncomfortable, resulting in images such as these. Encyclopedia Dramatica. A page for Chris Chan was created on the website Encyclopedia Dramatica by a man named Jason Kendrick Howell in order to keep track of the known information about Chris at the time, as well as to collect the fan art people were making and make fun of Chris's weird behavior. Chris believed that these people weren't making fun of him and were just misguided in their beliefs. He thought they were genuine fans of him and Sonichu. Vivian G. On November 4th, 2007, Chris received this email from a person known as Vivian G. I am Vivian G, originator of the Sonichu concept. I have noticed that you have a strikingly similar character that I have created. Some people have accused me of stealing your idea, and I would like it if you could announce that I have not stolen from you. I would really appreciate that. Vivi G. Chris denied this. And so Vivian sent him another email on November 6th. Jesus, are you so high on your horse that you think it's fan art? Jesus Christ, man, you are irritating me. 
You are putting me under more damn stress than you'll ever have. I already broke up with my boyfriend and college ain't helping shit. You and your claims of your precious characters that mean nothing to anyone. They mean fucking nothing to anyone cause they are worthless to everyone. You think you had a worse weekend, huh? Then tell me your story and I might feel some damn pity. I want to express my goddamn self to the internet and I find that some prick who thinks he's so great can call homosexuals wrong and I have two lesbian friends who would be offended as fuck by your ignorance and thinks that going around stalking girls will get you a girlfriend. Newsflash, bitch. You mean nothing to this world and you will never get fucking laid unless you improve yourself. Your troubles with jerk ops isn't because of them, it's because of you. Fuck off and die. Vivian G. This, along with Evan Christopher George, is one of the earliest trolls to have contact with Chris. Vivian would become a mainstay character of sorts in Chris's life, and would evolve into one of the longest running trolls in Christory. Joshua Martinez. This is a guy that Chris first met during his speech classes at James Madison University, way back during his childhood. During this time, Joshua discovered the early trolling of Chris, and was apparently inspired to do a little trolling of his own. He convinced Chris that he had connections to the movie industry, and also told him about a girl who was interested in meeting him, named Lori Lopez. Chris had conversations with Lori, who was really Joshua himself, over AOL. Chris Chan's Public Announcement Due to the recent surge in knowledge of Chris on the internet, he decides to take matters into his own hands and set the record straight. He asks for the people following him to be more understanding of him and his situation and gives out more of his personal information for free. Hello, my name is Christian Weston Chandler from Rutgers of Virginia. It has come to my attention that I have a lot more fans of my electronic, electric hedgehog Pokemon Sanchu than I had originally thought. And I thank each and every one of you for your support. And I will draw more comics uh, when I get some positive inspiration or uh, when I feel like it. After all, everybody, else, everybody has a life, so do I. I have a life. Anyway, it has also come to my attention that I have a lot of people who may have picked up on the wrong theories of my person. I would not quote any hate sites, but I would like to humbly apologize for appearing to be some kind of sleaze, troll, badass, or whatever adjectives, good or explicit, you may feel about me. Please understand, I am a 25-year-old high-functioning autistic male with a simple, peaceful dream of becoming a father of a sweet, little, pretty girl who I will dub the name Crystal Weston Chandler. Crystal, a name that sounds similar to mine, but it has a nice ring to it, and it's also similar to the illustrious metal that is mine from the Earth's ground. Weston, my mother's maiden name, and a proper English name from royal descent, as a matter of fact, among my uh, mother's side and the uh, ancestral traits, we have uh, we have been traced down to Daniel Weston, who was on the main Mayflower voyage, and uh, beyond him, Anne Boleyn, who was the uh, one of Henry VIII's King Henry VIII's wives, who gave birth to uh, Queen Elizabeth I. <coughs> and Chandler, the uh, name my the family name my father had. And uh, from his uh, line, uh, we have, uh, we, from his side of the family, we have the uh, Cherokee blood. I'm one sixteenth. And from among us Cherokees, there are very few of us left because we were big in number, but then came along the uh, force march on the Trail of Tears, while some of us went into hiding. Yeah, short line there, Cherokees. We're a respected tribe. We should be respected anyway, even though we were forced into the Trail of Tears. But that's in our that's in our whole nother story. You can go read you can learn about in your local libraries. Uh, my mother and my father are both really nice old fashioned type people who not only gave the birth gave me birth at their ages, which my mother is sixty six currently and my father is currently eighty. They both just turned that way in the last couple of months. And uh I was born in nineteen eighty two 
they gave me the birth then and uh, anyway there was some nice of them for them to give me the uh, birth during the early 1980s I was diagnosed with high functional autism and I lived a uh, somewhat rough life I've had an abusive babysitter at one time and some of the teachers and principals of Nathaniel Green Elementary School and I was attending in later years but uh, late 1980s early 1990s they abused me they abused me by pinning me to the ground with uh, their hand with the uh, holding my wrists and my ankles pin me down the ground and and audio taping my cries and shouts but anyway my mother and my father they both fought the court system the Green County court system which uh, they were not a very nice bunch of people very not hands down but anyway we eventually moved to Chesterfield County for a nice bear school system and one teacher in particular of Providence Middle School who I would like to give much kudos to who, who was who uh, let who not, who not only uh, let me it was a good good uh, person to go by uh, during my mainstreaming uh, she was also the uh, also a good leader in my learning to cope I wish to give kudos to Mrs. Virginia Janice Sanford of Providence Middle School in Chesterfield County whose picture is uh, in the trailer of my CWC on TV DVD which is also on the, the YouTube and after being on on a roll throughout uh, Providence Middle and Manchester High Sonic U was first thought up in my senior year and along with the uh, nice bunch of teachers backing me up in my circle of gal pals I mostly had gal, mostly had that circle during my high school years anyway after all that I graduated I graduated then we moved back to uh, our old home in Rutgersville where I attended Piedmont Virginia Community College and eventually I graduated from there too with a degree in computer a drafting and design also known as CAD CAM and uh, during my high school years I was used to being surrounded by girls in my circle and after having to uh, lead them I felt ever so lonesome and after the stress from some of the people people at PVCC as well as my mental block of autism it became hard for me to approach girl, approach the girls like I used to and I would like to point out right now at this at uh, during my ever since I ever, uh, during the whole my whole sweetheart search has started when I turned 21 on February 24 2002 anyway beyond that date I never have stalked anybody never have stalked I'm telling you right I'm telling you right now all I did was sit around with a sign by my side that said I was looking for a boyfriend free girl 1825 yada 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 all that page and I did all that because I have feared rejection and the infinitely high boyfriend factor because you cannot tell which ladies are paired up and which are not and wedding rings that's just a whole different story because they're married because it's not like you give every woman a ring who's already paired up and this is one perspective but anyway uh, I do not move from my seat at all unless I need to go use the restroom that's it okay I never move from my seat while I'm sitting around waiting for the girl to come to me because that's all I'm doing there I just wait for a girl to come talk to me because like I said I'm afraid to approach him at that point so please understand I am not a violent person I'm decent I come from a caring loving pair of parents I'm kind I'm considerate I will respect your space and your feelings ever so much and I apologize for my MySpace profile if it appears to reflect anything on the contrary of all that I apologize that I appear to be a slow-minded person I'm sorry for reflecting any negative feelings towards each of you that have felt them including those who have had such feelings they have created uh, demeaning web pages all I ask all I ask are those people who are watching this right now is just take them down please I'm asking as an innocent victim of misunderstanding just take down your web pages or add them to positively better reflect my feelings as an individual as a person as a band who has suffered like most everybody in this world that we all live in 
Thank you very much for, li for your time and listening. And please remember, I'm an innocent person. Just like most every one of you, I've had my faults. I've had my share of bad times. I have my share of good times. Please understand that. Thank you again. Take care. John's Custom Gundam. This is something I hadn't even heard about prior to researching this iceberg, so look at that, and we're learning something totally new today. This is apparently a game idea that Chris had in yet another attempt to win over Megan. The star of this game is neither Chris nor Sonichu, but Megan's older brother, John. He would be piloting a Gundam, aka a big battle robot for the uninitiated, and trying to rescue his sister Megan from the clutches of Mary Lee Walsh, her army of jerk-ops, and, of course, evil characters such as Dr. Eggman and the mobile suit Gundam antagonists, the Principality of Zeon. The only things which were ever created for this hypothetical game are the cover art and the CD print, both of which were hand-drawn by Chris in his usual style. She came for quick JPEG. <laughs> this is some crazy shit. On November 11th, 2007, Chris uploaded several pornographic images he had drawn onto the Encyclopedia Dramatica page. He did this in response to the drawings that the trolls had been uploading, such as the drawings depicting Sonichu characters in homosexual situations, or female characters with male genitalia. In Chris's mind, the images he put up were a sort of protest to the ones uploaded by other users, to replace negativity with positivity. She came for quick.jpg is an image of a drawing Chris made of himself fingering a naked woman and causing her to orgasm. Originally, the trolls believed this woman to be the character Crystal Weston Chandler and thought Chris was into incest. Insert foreshadowing joke here. However, this is actually meant to be a depiction of Megan Schroeder. Her eyes are covered with a black strip in the drawing, but it's definitely her, as Megan recognized herself when she later found the drawing, and Chris himself later confirmed it publicly. Needless to say, Megan did not find this to be positive, and it played a major part in ending their friendship, though she wouldn't find out about this just yet. For my true love, I would. This is a poem that Chris wrote on December 30th, 2007, and sent to a friend of Megan's, asking her to forward it to her. Here is the poem in full. For my true love, I treat her tenderly, sweetly, gently, like a summer breeze. I caress her skin gently with my strong fingers. I take her to eat and provide for her to my ability. I'd start small at McDonald's, then let it get better in due time. When the mood is right, I'd whisk her in my arms and lift her up in sweet gentleness. I would share with her the best kiss of my life, and hopefully hers, since it would be the first of my life. I would do for her as much as I am able to in getting her the she desires. Every day, I would try to make her smile with a jest, a spark, or a tender massage. If she's willing to allow the pleasure, I'd lay her down, caress her gently, tickle her fancy, have her tickle my fancy, and give it to her with the learned, lonely experience I've endured. But I digress on that. Most importantly, I would hang on to her every word of her life tales, her feelings, her troubled times, and I'd share my condolences accordingly, and I can hope she would be willing to do the same for me. I am nothing without this woman, so I hope and pray that she will stay to love me for me, as I would stay with her for her. I love you would be shared daily with a French side dish. I am her soldier, to do for her as she sees fit. It's over. In March of 2008, Megan would discover the She Came For Quick JPEG image on Encyclopedia Dramatica after she asked Chris to take down all references to her on the internet due to the attention he was receiving. 
She was understandably upset and creeped out by this. Chris tried desperately to apologize, writing the phrase, Megan, I'm sorry for hurting you, a total of 15 times in an email he sent to her expressing his sorrow for posting the image. However, he later tries to defend his drawing, saying, quote, As for the drawing itself, I've realized that it was done not only out of inspired fantasy, angst against E.D., and love for you, but also as a major release for my crazy mixed-up hormones. If I didn't have the foresight to put my pent-up frustrations and feelings in the form of something, I might have become an abusive maniac. So thank God for allowing me to release my bottled up frustrations in a more positive, yet not so politically correct, and not physically hurting others, method. As well as, Megan, I'm sorry for uploading the drawing, and I really wish I could go back in time and stop myself from making the mistake. Yet I do not regret drawing the drawing, because if I hadn't released my frustrations in the creative sense, I might actually have done something really dumb and stupid. This makes it sound like, if Chris hadn't drawn that image, he would have kidnapped Megan or something. She also interpreted it this way, and would stop talking to him altogether by mid-April of that year. Megan Shrine. This is something that truly shows the depth of Chris's, at the time, obsession with Megan. In one corner of his cluttered room, there is photographic evidence of a literal shrine he created in honor of Megan. The shrine is a shelf adorned with drawings that are presumably done by Megan and given to Chris, including ones of Pokemon characters and original Sonic the Hedgehog characters, one of Sailor Moon and another of Chris's dog, Patty. On the shelves, there is merchandise that Chris associated with Megan, such as My Little Pony dolls, Hello Kitty toys, some manga aimed at a female audience, and Sailor Moon VHSs. After Chris's falling out with Megan, he kept the shrine up, though it was mostly dismantled as of late 2010. And uh, that does it for part three of the chronological Chris Chan iceberg. If you pulled up the original image of the iceberg in order to follow along, I'm sure you'll see that I actually added several points of interest myself. This is because I found the original to be a bit lacking in the first few tiers, so I took it upon myself to do a little extra research in order to bring you a more complete picture of this time in Chris's life. My main sources of information were the Quickie and Gino Samuels documentary, both of which you can find linked in the description if you want to do some research of your own on Chris. I'll get working on part four of this series as soon as I can, in which we'll be going over the early trolling attempts uh, made by people on ED and 4chan and something awful. It's a, it's a wild time. If you want to know when that comes out, feel free to subscribe to the channel. As always, comment if you have something to say, and like the video if you liked it. I hope to see you all back here soon. Bye for now.